A Step into the Past Volume 14 Chapter 12 Book 14 Chapter 12 A Chaotic Banquet Seated between Physician Langting and General Su Yizi, Prince Dan did not show any signs of surprise and smiled, I heard Mr. Guan Zongzi from your esteemed residence has defeated the experts of Qi. I wonder if he will show us some of his skills. Prince Dan, the successor to the Yan throne, is used to such challenges and difficulties. He knew that he cannot shy away from dueling. Otherwise, it may be a sign of cowardice and in this foreign state of Qin, he must fight or Qin may use this as an excuse to attack Yan. Success and failures are common in fighting. Even if he loses, he will be disgraced but it is something that is inevitable. However, Prince Dan intentionally singled out Guan Zongzi to counter Liu Buwei. If Liu Buwei sent Guan Zongzi out, it shows that Prince Dan has good foresight. If Liu Buwei did not send Guan Zongzi out, he can only send Liu Chan as Lao Ai has left him and Zhou Xian was defeated by Jing Jun last night. Prince Dan has seen Liu Chan's sword skills and can choose a fighter from his team to counter his weak points. It is only two simple sentences but it has highlighted the intelligence of Prince Dan. Liu Buwei did not expect Prince Dan to counter him so effectively and began laughing. He winked at Guan Zongzi and Guan Zongzi acknowledged his order with another laugh and stepped out to an open area beside the banquet grounds. He paid his respects to Prince Dan, I am flattered by your high opinion of my lowly skills. Here I am and will Prince please send your expert and let us learn from each other. Now, it is Prince Dan's turn to be agonized. Liu Buwei carried out a chain attack and now, it seems like Liu Buwei has no intention to send Guan Zongzi but did so to appease Prince Dan. Everyone was excited at the martial arts competition as well as the chance to ridicule the people of Yan and cheered loudly. After all, Guan Zongzi's swordsmanship is one of the best in Xianyang city and it is possible that he is even better than Xiang Shaolong. With his amazing archery that killed four birds with two arrows, he is now as respected as Xiang Shaolong who threw the five flying needles. But as most people have never seen him fight, everyone is waiting eagerly in anticipation. The crowd is cheering loudly and the mood is extremely lively. Before he even start fighting, Guan Zongzi has impressed the crowd with his muscular frame, solid build and imposing air. Xiang Shaolong could not help but glanced over to the female warriors. Every one of them including Ying Ying and Liu Danner was whispering at each other and has an intoxicated expression on their faces. He could not help but trembled strongly. If Guan Zongzi is allowed to show off his might, the two fickle ladies Ying Ying and Liu Danner may surrender to his seduction. Now that his injury is more or less healed, should he enter the fighting ring? If he lost, the consequences will be disastrous. But if he did not fight because he was afraid of losing, it will prick his conscience and affect his self-confidence. As he was thinking furiously, Prince Dan pretended to be pleased and sent a fighter from the back seat. This man announced his name to be Yan Du. Everyone was alarmed as this man is a reputable fighter too. Xiang Shaolong could not help but asked Lord Chengping about Yan Du. Lord Chengping happily explained, this man is one of the top three fighters of Yan. We have no idea that he came to Xianyang City with Prince Dan. It is rumored that his sword speed is as fast as lightning and can cut open swallows that are flying in mid-air. That is how good he is. Xiang Shaolong took a closer look at Yan Du. Yan Du is a tall and thin man with a lump on each side of his forehead. His eyes are brimming with energy and he is around the age of 25. He is not considered a handsome man but has an extraordinary air around him. The most remarkable thing about him is that he is clothed fully in yellow. With a crooked nose like an eagle, he radiates calmness. However, Guan Zongzi is even more eye-catching than him. In a snow-white outfit, his head is tied neatly in a red bun and is half a head taller than the tall Yan Du. If Yan Du is a well-prepared fighter, Guan Zongzi is casual-looking fighter. On his arrogant face is an irritating smile that shows his despise for everyone. No wonder Ying Ying may be in love with Xiang Shaolong but still succumbed to his advances. Both men paid their respects to Xiao Pan and Zhu Ji, asking permission to begin their fight. 
Xiao Pan may not realize that this duel is ultimately aimed to ruin Xiang Shealong's reputation but he did not want Guan Zongzi to have any chance to show off his skills. But with Zhu Ji supporting at the side, he helplessly consented, the duel is a friendly match and shall cease when a winner has been determined. I do not want to see any bloodshed or deaths tonight. Both men kneeled down and accepted his order. However, everyone knows that it is a real duel with real weapons being used. It is really hard to avoid injuring the opponent. Some brought out two armor suits from the crowd and Guan Zongzi smiled, I do not need the armor. Brother Yan, please help yourself. Yan Du had no choice but to reject the armor too as it will affect his agility. Before they drew their swords, both men stood still under the illumination of the torches. Their killing aura immediately flooded the area as everyone held their breaths in silence so as not to affect their concentration. Zhang Yan Du drew his sword first and displayed a magnificent pose with the sword across his chest. True experts like Xiang Xiaolong could tell that he is actually succumbing to Guan Zongzi's pressure and needed to draw his sword and stabilized himself. It is something that only experts can sense. Just like during a battle, an experienced general can predict the victory based on the morale and the determination of the soldiers. Guan Zongzi laughed loudly and his left arm patted the sword that was hanging around his right waist. He solemnly state, my sword is named Long Strike and it is forged by the blacksmiths of Yu. The sword is five feet and four inches long, which makes it one foot longer than most swords. Brother Yan must not neglect its length. Zhang Long Strike was drawn out by his right hand in a flash. While everyone is dazzled by the stunning brilliance of the flashing sword, Guan Zongzi stepped forward and sent his sword towards Yan Du. Xiang Xiaolong was reminded about something when he saw Guan Zongzi patting his sword with his left hand. He summoned the guardians and instructed them to retrieve his Mahist sword. Yan Du's sword flew out and clashed heavily with Guan Zongzi's sword. Dang! Both men withdrew their sword and retreated a few steps, eyeing each other with caution. Everyone was still holding their breaths. The first strike is both men testing each other's skills. The real show is yet to come. Xiang Xiaolong noticed Yan Du's hand is shaking slightly and guessed that his arm strength is much weaker than Guan Zongzi. Yan Du may have a very good martial arts foundation but unfortunately, his opponent is Guan Zongzi. Glowing with confidence, Guan Zongzi let out a cold snort and sent another strike towards Yan Du. Although the attack is similar to the one before, the onlookers can sense that it is an earth-shattering attack that will be quite impossible to defend no matter who you are. Yan Du roared and his sword flicked out from the side, drawing an arc before clashing with long strike with a loud KENG. Despite making a later move, his sword hit first and did not disgrace the reputation of Yan's swordplay. Even so, he was shaken and had to take a small step back. Guan Zongzi was about to press on with another attack when Yan Du roared again and took three steps back. In his hands, his sword drew circles in the air which reflected the torches. Now his sword appears to be on fire. It is an amazing swordplay and everyone finally broke the silence and exploded in loud cheering. Guan Zongzi did not expect his swordplay to be so exquisite and it prevented him from advancing further. Summoning his heroic courage, he let out a long roar and withdrew his sword. He swung it strongly forward like a trail of rainbow and the sword rung loudly as it sliced through the air. His pose is awe-inspiring and exudes a godly aura and a sense of invincibility. The feeling is so intense that even Yan Du is affected and his battle strength dropped by 20%. The two weapons clashed in a blink of an eye and they exchanged several strokes spontaneously. Like a bolt from the blue, both men suddenly retreated at the speed of light. As no one can see their earlier fight very clearly, it is still a mystery who the winner is. Zhang Guan Zongzi sheathed his sword. Despite both his eyes still focusing on his opponent, his sword accurately entered the tiny gap of his sheath like a poisonous snake with eyes. Everyone was shocked at his gesture while the female warriors are cheering at the top of their voices. Yan Du's sword is still aimed at Guan Zongzi but his face has turned completely white and there are large drops of perspiration on his forehead. He shook and lowered his sword on the floor, leaning against it like a walking stick. 
it seems like he has overexerted himself. On his forehead, there is a horizontal sword wound. It is only a surface wound as Guan Zongzi has been merciful. However, such a prominent injury and resulting scar will only constantly remind Yan Du and the people around him that he was once defeated by this heartless man. Guan Zongzi cupped his hands, thanks for allowing me to win. Someone came out from the crowd and helped a furious Yan Du out. In the midst of all the cheering, Guan Zongzi paid his respects to Xiao Pan and Zhu Ji. Prince Dan and Lang Ting maintained a calm expression but Su Yi Zi and the other men were incensed at Guan Zongzi's offending injury. Liu Buwei laughed loudly, Guan Zongzi, you disobeyed the crown prince's order and blood is seen. I punish you with this cup of wine. By now, even Prince Dan and Lang Ting have an ugly expression on their faces as Liu Buwei has gone too far with this insolent remark. Sitting at Liu Buwei's table, Caize exclaimed, Zongzi's swordsmanship had aroused our interest. I wonder if Assistant Commander Jing is around. I would love to see him pitting his skills against Zongzi. Guan Zongzi received his cup of wine from Liu Buwei and toasted in the direction of Xiao Pan, Zhu Ji, and the crowd. Everyone in the crowd raised their wine cups and toasted to him in return. Xiang Xiaolong is more sure than ever that Liu Buwei is out to get him. He guessed that Liu Buwei believes that Xiao Pan holds him in high regard because he is a national hero. Thus, before he aa dies, Liu Buwei wants to disgrace Xiang Xiaolong in public and make Xiao Pan shift his hero worship to Guan Zongzi instead. With Caize's comment, it is hard for him to remain silent. He plainly state, Assistant Commander is attending to some duties and is not present at the banquet. I am sorry for disappointing official CAI. CAIZE is well prepared for his answer and continued his digging. Last night, there is also a man named Huan Chi who won three consecutive fights. Let's have a taste of his skills again. Liu Buwei's supporters begin to cheer supportively at his suggestion. Obviously, they are trying to instigate a fight between Xiang Xiaolong and Guan Zongzi. Lord Chongping sensed that something is amiss. He whispered into Xiang Xiaolong's ears, they are trying to embarrass you. HNG. Xiang Xiaolong knew that this fight is inevitable. There is no way he will let Huan Qi fight Guan Zongzi. If Huan Qi is killed or heavily injured by Guan Zongzi, he would have let Wang Ji undown and Xiao Pan's dream of a special elite force will be dashed. Even if Huan Qi did not suffer any injuries, his newly minted reputation will be destroyed. He glanced quickly at the female warriors and saw that every one of them including Ying Ying are totally mesmerized by Guan Zongzi. If he did not fight now, Ying Ying will be lost to Guan Zongzi and Jing Jun will lose El Yu Danner too. Moreover, if he came up with another excuse that Huan Qi is away for work, El Yu Buwei's men will spread rumors that he, Xiang Xiaolong, is afraid of Guan Zongzi. Finally, he looked at Xiao Pan. Xiao Pan is looking back at him with a hopeful expression. Rejuvenated, Xiang Xiaolong let out a long laugh. He stood up and casually said, Since official Guan is so enthusiastic, let me have some fun with you. The crowd was completely silent for a split second before erupting into loud clapping and cheering. Guan Zongzi smiled, Official Xiang's leg is injured and should not fight. If the wound reopened, I will feel guilty. Zhu Ji interrupted, Xiao Long should not force yourself. Xiang Xiao Long unbuckled Blood Wave and handed it to Wu Shu behind him. He received the Mahist sword and felt his fighting spirit rising. He thought that since he will have to fight him sooner or later, it might as well be tonight. He smiled, if official Guan can make my wound reopen, I will surrender the fight to you. The crowd saw that his words are full of dominating spirit and clapped loudly for him adding to the liveliness of the situation. Xiang Xiaolong exchanged a knowing glance at Prince Dan and Lang Ting before he walked to the center of the fighting arena. Standing side by side with Guan Zongzi, they paid their respects to Xiao Pan. Xiao Pan has full confidence in Xiang Xiaolong's amazing swordplay. Pleased, he advised both of them, weapons are blind, please fight with caution. Xiang Xiaolong understood that Xiao Pan wanted him to kill Guan Zongzi. 
Inspired, he thought of a winning strategy. Guan Zongzi believed that he will be dying tomorrow and will not sacrifice his own life to defeat him. Based on this point, he is at a serious disadvantage. Another benefit is that he has seen Guan Zongzi fight but Guan Zongzi has no idea about his own swordplay but only managed to hear it from other people's experiences. If he demonstrated his full Mahist swordplay, he is confident of giving Guan Zongzi a run for his money. Thinking about these points, he formulated a winning plan. Both men stood apart from each other. As the crowd looked on, they stared at each other's eyes and thus, the ultimate battle has begun. By now, there are many onlookers who have gathered around when they heard about the dueling. Now, the whole place is extremely packed. When Wu Xu went back to retrieve the Mahist sword, Ji Yan ran, and the girls were alarmed and hurriedly rushed over. Now, they managed to squeeze themselves at Lord Changping's table. Qin Xing is here as well and joined their table. Everyone is in a great mood. Zhu Ji is worried that Guan Zongzi will injure Xiang Shaolong and her expression is grave. She nearly wanted to leave as she could not bear to see the fight. Guan Zongzi humbly state, being able to fight with official Xiang is one of the highlights of my life. Xiang Shaolong coldly replied, I wonder if official Guan will use his best skill today the left hand sword play. The moment he said this, the crowd went, wah. Nobody expected that in all his past fights, Guan Zongzi had been concealing his true ability. For the first time ever, Guan Zongzi's face changed color and he dryly smiled, Official Xiang is truly observant. This is the moment Xiang Shaolong has been waiting for. The Mahist sword leaning on his shoulder sprang into the air and he advanced forward quickly. Using the heavy weight of the Mahist sword, he attacked Guan Zongzi face on. Zhang. Indeed, Guan Zongzi pulled out his sword using his left arm and adopted the horse stance. As quick as lightning, he blocked the Mahist sword. Instead of following up with another attack, Xiang Shaolong withdrew and adopted one of the three Matsi killing stances, defending attack. The wooden sword was flying everywhere and Guan Zongzi could not decipher if it is an attacking stance or a defending stance. Moreover, he was distracted by Xiang Shaolong earlier and did not know how to counter him. Reluctantly, he took two steps back to recompose himself. Everyone saw that Xiang Shaolong performed a miraculous first attack befitting his reputation and broke out into loud cheers. Xiang Shaolong entered the calm state of Mahist meditation and abandoned all his emotions, including the fear of defeat, fear of death, etc. His mind is completely clear and every single movement made by Guan Zongzi cannot escape his eyes. Everyone saw that both are awe-inspiring warriors and resembled heavenly generals and could not help but feel even more excited than before. It is the first time Ying Ying and the female warriors witnessed Xiang Shaolong's fascinating skills and were completely swept away. For the moment, they did not know who to cheer for. Guan Zongzi can detect the increasing confidence and fighting power of Xiang Shaolong. The corner of his mouth curled in a smile and he coldly snorted before he sent his sword towards Xiang Shaolong. From this attack, everyone can tell that his left hand is indeed superior to his right hand. His head, arm, waist, and feet were in perfect coordination. Although it is only his left arm holding the sword, it felt like his whole body is part of the attack. It is a startling move that sends shivers down everyone's spine. It is an incredibly fast attack but it looks slow at the same time. Everyone can see his sword clearly and even can predict where it will hit. Even so, the attack is so powerful that it seems to be unavoidable. Such a unique move that is both fast and slow is the pinnacle of swordplay. While everyone is worried for Xiang Shaolong, Xiang Shaolong maintained his calm expression and used his left hand to hold his sword instead. In a perfect counterattack, the heavy Mahist sword landed squarely three inches away from the tip of Guan Zongzi's sword. Xiang Shaolong is truly formidable. Using the heavy wooden sword, he has nullified Guan Zongzi's stronger arm strength. At the same time, the blow hit the weakest point of Guan Zongzi's sword and deflected it away. Never in his wildest dreams would Guan Zongzi expect Xiang Shaolong to use his left hand. All his earlier strategies have gone to waste. 
he was also alarmed at the heavy wooden sword's attacking power. Xiang Shaolong consecutively attacked him three times but Guan Zongzi did not take a single step back but defend himself well. Using his strength and fast reflexes, he met each of Xiang Shaolong's heavy blows head on. Everyone was intoxicated by their grandeur and madly cheered for both of them. Every time their weapons clashed, a loud sound was made. After the three heavy blows, Xiang Shaolong followed up with another seven blows. Before the crowd suffocated under the aura of his pressing attacks, the two men separated and stared at each other fiercely. Xiang Shaolong needed to catch his breath while Guan Zongzi needed to recover from the fierce attacks and did not dare to retaliate. Xiang Shaolong is full of admiration. He crossed swords with Xiao Waima before and often sparred with Tang Yi who has better arm strength than himself. Thus, he is familiar when dealing with people like Guan Zongzi. In his ten attacks, he incorporated elements of biology, parabolic and rotation theory but Guan Zongzi still managed to fend him off without taking a step backwards. Thus, Guan Zongzi's defending skills are watertight and have reached an extremely high level. In addition, he attacked Guan Zongzi when he is in a disadvantaged position but is unable to overcome him. Based on this point, he knows that he cannot defeat him. But this is normal under ordinary circumstances. Ultimately, fights are normally won on psychology factors and strategy which Xiang Shaolong happened to be an expert on both subjects. Guan Zongzi is horrified. Since the day he learned sword fighting, he has always focused on sword attacks. For the past ten clashes, he is painfully defending himself. This is something that he has never encountered all his life. The crowd became silent as everyone anticipated their second bout. Guan Zongzi composed himself earlier that Xiang Shaolong and immediately sent his sword flying towards Xiang Shaolong. His sword swung up from below, aiming at Xiang Shaolong's chest. Holding his sword horizontally across him, a steady Xiang Shaolong let out a long howl and ignored the incoming sword. He slanted his body to one side and sent his own sword towards Guan Zongzi's forehead. Everyone was shocked but Xiang Shaolong knew better. He has yet to catch his breath from their earlier exchange. If he insisted on defending himself, he will be forced to retreat. When that happens, Guan Zongzi can follow up with more attacks and sooner or later, he will succumb to his stronger arm strength. But with his unorthodox move, he has avoided the attack partially and Guan Zongzi will need some time to change the direction of his attack. It is a trick to stall for time. In the end, he may be heavily injured but his heavy Mahist sword will land on Guan Zongzi's forehead and kill him instantly. This is the first time in his life Guan Zongzi is fighting a man who is willing to sacrifice his own life to win. As Xiang Shaolong expected, Guan Zongzi will not sacrifice himself and frantically withdrew his sword to deflect his blow. Dang! A loud sound resonated throughout the area. Xiang Shaolong has used up every single bit of strength in his body in this attack. Coupled with the heavy wooden sword, Guan Zongzi was badly shaken and could not hold back anymore. He finally took a step back. Xiang Shaolong will not let this golden opportunity slip by. He used the most powerful Mazi killing stance, attacking and defending at the same time. His sword aura became more powerful and his attacks are full of intricate changes. Like waves after waves of the majestic river, he assaulted Guan Zongzi relentlessly. Guan Zongzi saw that his moves are out of the ordinary and let out a long howl, defending himself from all his attacks. Every onlooker from Xiao Pan to the palace guards were shouting out their cheers and it was an emotional scene. Xiang Shaolong's killing aura grew and he forgot all about the Mahist swordplay. He simply attacked Guan Zongzi whenever there is an opening and his moves are unpredictable. Like a pouncing beast, he was full of energy, fast and every single attack he made is vicious and out to take Guan Zongzi's life. Against his own wishes, Guan Zongzi is forced to retreat. When he took the seventh step back, Xiang Shaolong's attack became weaker and Guan Zongzi managed to turn the tables around using a special move and blocked Xiang Shaolong's sword. After Xiang Shaolong attacked him one more time, he retreated and leisurely put his wooden sword on his shoulder. Guan Zongzi sighed with relief and dared not retaliate. 
Again, the two men stared at each other fiercely. With a shocked expression on his face, Liu Bue stood up and shouted, Stop! Everyone turned and looked at him.